I'm Julie. I'm from Monmouth, Maine. I'm 58 years old or young, however you'd like to look at it. And I love doing comedy, and I've met some of the best people out there. I like long walks on the beach, trashy romance novels, and feel free to buy me a margarita. So, okay, I know what you're thinking. Who is this lady? Why is she here? Shouldn't she be performing Menopause the Musical somewhere? Because I know, when you look at me, you think, she's dry. Just, just talk. I get it, I get it, don't worry about it, it's okay. So I had to call my parents, yeah, that's right, before I came here tonight. We have a weekly standing call, Saturday, at 3.30, right before their dinner. <laughs> they live in Florida year round. Now up until last year they used to snowbird, but they're getting a little older. They've decided to live in Florida full time. And I am here to tell you that it is much easier to be a bitter disappointment from 1,500 miles away. <laughs> My mother is 80 years old. She's a retired school teacher. She's a great grandmother. She's batshit crazy. <laughs> when they were home last year, she fell and broke her wrist while walking, oh, thank you, while walking her beloved Shih Tzu Bella or she makes me call her my sister. <laughs> so I get a call. Uh, your mother's been taken to the hospital. So I rush over to the hospital. I get off the elevator and I can hear my mother. Oh, the pain. Oh, it hurt. So I fly into her room and I'm like, what is going on, mom? And the doctor says, your mother has refused pain medication until someone from her family arrived. I'm like, Mom, why would you do that? The doctor said, I believe her exact words were, she was concerned that if she fell asleep, the staff would steal from her. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Mom, take pain medication. Finally, she took her pain medication and fell asleep. And that's when I stole her wallet. <laughs> $2 and a Werther's original is what she held out for. She's crazy. My mom is super, super old school. You do not call people at work. You never bother someone at work. Well, first of all, she's just surprised I managed to hold down a job. Uh, so she never calls me at work, unless, of course, somebody is dead in the family. So I see her call a few days ago at work, and I'm like, oh, here we go. Please let it be Uncle Ralph. Please let it be Uncle Ralph. I am so tired of being kissed on the mouth by that man. <laughs> and last Christmas, there might have been tongue. <laughs> so I answer the phone. Hi, Mom. And she's like, don't call the house at 4 o'clock. So I'm totally taken aback. I'm like, well, Mom, what's going on? Do not call me at 4 o'clock today. I'm like, okay, Mom, I won't call you. Why can't I call? The psychic is calling. I'm like, the psychic? She's like, my friend Shirley has this psychic. She's fantastic. She's going to tell me my future, and I don't want the phone beeping in. I'm like, fine, I won't call you at 4 o'clock. I get off the phone, and I think, well, this psychic's got quite the racket going. Let's call 80-year-old women and tell them their future. <laughs> Hi, Miss Brenda. Oh, I see in your future, death. <laughs> when my mother turned 75 years old, I said, Mom, what do you want to do for your birthday? I'll do whatever you want. I'll take you anywhere you want to go. And she said, you know, I always wanted to go to P-Town. Now, for those of you who don't know, P-Town is Provincetown. And it is a delightful coastal community in Massachusetts known for its vibrant gay culture. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I love, love, love it. If I didn't like penis so much, I'd be gay. That's how much I love it. <laughs> so we go to P-Town, we see a show, we see the parade, we have a great time. We decide to do a little shopping. And my mom calls me over, Julie, Julie, come here. Look at this bracelet, it's so cute. I'm gonna buy it, it'll go with everything. So I look down and she has a beaded rainbow bracelet on. And I'm like, yeah, mom, you can get it. She goes, oh, I'm just gonna wear it out of here. And I'm like, uh, no, no, you're gonna get a bag. You're not, you're not gonna wear it out of here. Oh, Julie, I don't wanna have to carry a bag around. 
like mom, you can buy the bracelet, but you're not wearing it out of here and we'll talk about it outside. So we get outside and my mother says, why wouldn't you let me wear the bracelet? And I'm like, mom, it's rainbow, it's gay pride. She's like, well, you don't care if people think you're gay. I'm like, no, I care if they think I'm with you. <laughs> I can do way better. <laughs> I'm gonna share a secret with you. This is a big one, this is a big secret. So this is the secret on how to become invisible. Okay, this is good. No cloak necessary, no magic wands needed, no incantations. The only thing that you need to become invisible is to become a woman in your 50s. You are invisible. It happens. You're beautiful though, so no worries for you. No men under the age of 65 can see you. No women under the age of 35 can hear you. And no clerk at American Eagle is ever going to ask if they can help you. It's what I refer to as entering the ma'am zone. Would you like help out to your car, ma'am? Would there be anything else, ma'am? Excuse me, ma'am, could you move? You're blocking the hot chicks. <laughs> it's okay, it's not all bad in the man zone. They make products specifically for those of us in the man zone. That's right. There's Spanx underwear. The name alone lets you know how it's gonna feel when you put it on and take it off. There's poise pads. Because I never feel more poised than when I'm peeing my pants. <laughs> How many of you can say you registered your car and peed your pants at the same time? <laughs> this gal can, that too. Oh, and then there's Vagistat. All right, I don't actually have a problem with Vagistat. It's been a long time since something wanted to get there immediately. <laughs> it's the man zone. It's being invisible. I'm so invisible. Five years ago, I decided to enter a triathlon. It was just for women. It was all about empowering women. I spent months training for this thing. I ran, I biked, I swam. The day finally arrives, I take the four hours necessary to get this into a wetsuit. <laughs> I am on the shoreline and I am just so pumped up about this. And the announcer starts calling us in. All women 35 to 40 may now enter the water. Off they go and the crowd goes crazy. <sighs> All women 40 to 45 may now enter the water. Off they go and the crowd is just screaming. Shh, shh, shh. All women 45 to 50 may now enter the water. Off they go and the crowd is in a frenzy at this point. <sighs> now I'm on the shoreline. Oh my God, my group's next. I can't believe it's finally here. I've worked so hard for this day. Everyone else. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And then I realized right there that I am the human equivalent of meatloaf. <laughs> I am a leftover. Oh, you'd still eat it just as long as no one was looking. <laughs> Speaking of vaginas, <laughs> What's with ladies night? I'm sorry, it drives me crazy. I go to a restaurant with a friend of mine and a perky little waitress runs right up. Oh, hi ladies. You picked a good night to be here. It's ladies night. Well, whew, thank God I strapped on my vagina before I left the house. <laughs> Every day is ladies night in my world. So pandemic looks like it's winding down. Life's getting back to normal. So I decided to take a little Julie time. Went to a spa, gonna get a facial, a pedicure, the whole thing. Sitting in the waiting room with my nice white puffy robe, waiting for my turn, and I see on the table a pamphlet. So I pick it up and it says, are you a woman in your 50s? Does your vagina look tired? And there's a little cartoon drawing of a yawning vagina. <laughs> then perhaps, Vaginal rejuvenation is for 
for you. And I'm like, well, I mean, if it's, you know, just dipping it in some orange juice and it's gonna perk it up, <laughs> sign me up. I opened the pamphlet, it is not, it, it, it is not, it, some dude came up with this idea, seriously. And you know what I started thinking? If you're a woman in your 50s and your vagina looks tired, good for you. <laughs> Uh, I hope my belly's not in this. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can only be shot from the half of the neck up. Please. There we go. <laughs> right here. Just from here to here. Okay. That'd be nice. Thank you very much. I'd appreciate that. Yeah. I'm Leonard Kimball. I, uh, I live in Auburn, Maine. I'm originally from Chicago. Uh, so I learned how to watch comedy in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> and then I moved out here, and then I learned how to do comedy. For four years I've been doing comedy, it's been great. I, I love what we've, we've been producing with the River Comics uh, here at Crab Brew Underground. It's been so, so fun. I love it. Thank you guys so very much for coming out this evening. We have a, uh, have a fun time in store for you guys. I'm, I'm so happy to see you all. Uh, but before I get too far into my set, uh, I just want to pause and ask you guys to look up here to maybe not jump to any conclusions or to prejudge me, you know, in our social environment we have nowadays. Uh, I really want everyone to understand that uh, the microphone adds 10 pounds. <laughs> and uh, I've been doing a lot of comedy lately. <laughs> I've also been doing a lot of cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cheeseburgers. Uh, so let's just acknowledge the brown elephant in the room. Uh, I'm out of shape. Yeah, uh, I get winded now and then. Uh, and now? <laughs> I don't want to alarm you, but uh, it's been over an hour since I've eaten. <laughs> I am working on things though. I got myself this calorie counting app, and uh, my Lose It app says for breakfast tomorrow, I can have 30 sit ups. <laughs> yeah, uh, I checked my Fitbit, and it says ask again later. <laughs> I got myself this stationary bike. Uh, it's very stationary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went to Burger King the other evening and the young lady's behind the counter and I say, hi, can I have a Whopper with cheese meal, please? And she looks at me down, she has this disgusted look on her face and she goes, oh, um, uh, don't you mean two Whopper with cheese meals? <laughs> and, and I said, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, she knows me. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, Please laugh at my jokes. I have high cholesterol. <laughs> uh, so during the pandemic, it gave me an opportunity to work on other parts of, uh, of my act, and uh, I've been working on a couple of impressions. So if you guys will indulge me this evening, I'd like to try them out for you, if you, if you don't mind. All right? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Let me encourage him. Okay. Uh, uh, see if you guys can guess his first impression. Hold on. This. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Uh, learn to fish, assholes! That, that's Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> I know there aren't many recordings of his voice, but uh, I think I got it, I think I got it. Uh, all right, I got one more. This, this is a little bit harder for me, hold on. Uh, does this bus take tokens? <laughs> That's Rosa Parks. <laughs> but you guys know who Rosa Parks is, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Civil rights leader, uh, Presidential Medal of Freedom. Okay. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to get into who else might have recently have won a Presidential Medal of Freedom. <laughs> Mother Teresa. <laughs> Fucking hack. <laughs> Right, you guys are cool with the religious stuff. Okay, we'll, we'll keep going with that. Um, 
I, I saw a bumper sticker on a car the other evening, and it said, Jesus is my co-pilot. And I'm like, is Jesus not good enough to be a pilot? <laughs> I mean, he's Jesus for Christ's sake. Uh, I discovered recently, actually, um, that I think I might be an atheist. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. No God. Ah, I'll do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'm an atheist. I I don't believe in Jesus, but I know he believes in me. <laughs> Oh, we got some Sunday school goers in the back. Yeah, great. Excellent. Yeah, I actually grew up uh, going to Sunday school every week. My grandmother brought me up in the church, and we were taught uh, to be kind to one another, uh, the golden rule, uh, treat each other the way you want to be treated, uh, or else this uh, invisible man in the sky who watches you while you masturbate... <laughs> will uh, throw you into a fiery pit for all eternity. <laughs> and little 13-year-old little Leonard was like, uh, I was cool with the just being kind part. <laughs> a fiery pit? Like, watches me while I masturbate? Oh, goodness. Who was it, Uncle Carl? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw in the news the other day that Maine's math scores have dropped by 2% every year for the last four years. But actually, how can anyone know for sure? <laughs> Great, that's how much... Like that joke deserves. Good. Barometer's <laughs> reset for that one. Okay. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. <clears throat> I uh, so I live here in Auburn. Uh, and I have a I have a couple of close personal friends on the Auburn police force. Uh, back in my hometown of Chicago, I have a couple of uncles who are firefighters. Uh, you know, uh, brave guys. I, uh, I just have a tremendous amount of respect for first responders, right? Uh, can we just quickly give it up for first responders? Thank you. Uh, you know, the thing is though, no one ever talks about the second responders. <laughs> the CSI guys, you know? I, I think we need to give them a little bit of love too, occasionally. Yeah, like, like someone could just throw out a, Hey man, nice sheet. <laughs> okay, I'll wait for people to get it. Okay. Uh, 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 hey, you uh, you zip that bag up like a real pro. Uh, you, you didn't catch any flesh at all in the zipper. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, cool pressure washer, man. <laughs> It's like nothing ever happened. <laughs> I picture a second responder showing me at a bank robbery. Bullets are flying, and he's like, holy shit, I'm here way too early. <laughs> you guys don't even have the little cones out yet? Oh, oh my goodness, I'm a second responder. I don't, I don't go into the scene unless I get to go underneath the tape. <laughs> Uh, you guys might know Russell Wilson, he's a famous black NFL quarterback. I, I saw that he, he left his white wife for a black woman, and uh, he's a millionaire. Uh, but I, I couldn't possibly leave my white wife. Um, but it's not for the reason you might think. Um, you know, she makes more money than I do. <laughs> And that's not for the reason you might think of. It's, it's, actually, it's actually because she's white. Yeah. I'm actually not very good at being black. Yeah, you guys are looking up here like, hey, um, what's up with his skin? Yeah, I'm an African-American. 
Uh, but I, I married a white woman, though, like I said. Uh, any other white people out there? <laughs> yeah, represent. <laughs> well, you guys are everywhere. Okay. Def Leppard, yay! <laughs> For you, right? Pour some sugar on me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I love my wife, I do. Uh, but my next wife will love Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> well, they're an African American rap supergroup. Uh, so, like I said, my wife's white, so my kids are only Africans. <laughs> That means they know how to swim. <laughs> yeah, also, their credit is only half bad. <laughs> it's okay, it is worse. Uh, they have excellent rhythm, but can only dance to Nickelback. <laughs> yeah, fuck Nickelback, yeah, I get it. Uh, and my son, He's the best black kid on the chess team and the best white kid on the basketball team. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at being black, as you guys might be able to tell. Um, but my, my cousin, though, he has a PhD in African American studies. Uh, he, he got me a t shirt. Uh, it says, Dream like Martin, lead like Harriet, think like Malcolm. And I'm just praying that none of my white friends ask me who any of these people are. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm so bad at being black, I once drank an IPA on a marina. <laughs> uh, I'm so bad at being black, I don't know if it's Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey who died. <laughs> yeah, like you guys know, okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm so bad at being black, I thought Juneteenth was a typo. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just doesn't look right. It's not a real word. Uh, I discovered recently that a lot of my white friends count me as their one black friend. Uh, but uh, jokes on them, all of my black friends count me as their one white friend. <laughs> Yeah, I like Alan's Coffee Brandy instead of Cavassier. Uh, I listen to Taylor Swift instead of Rihanna. Uh, yeah, because hate is gonna hate, 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 hate. Yeah. And I have a boring, regular-sized, nine-and-a-half-inch penis like the rest of you guys. <laughs> Quite some time it feels like. I grew up in Portland, and that's a pretty funny town, uh, you know. And that's uh, that's just the way it is uh, when you're a kid and you're a little short, and uh, you know you look like this. So you got to be funny to get to get get through each day. Um, fun as an adult isn't the same as fun as a kid, is it? No. Fun as a kid. Remember, like riding your bike down a road. Like really fast, just pedaling, 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 and seeing that curve at someone's driveway and hitting that and thinking like, wow, I'm getting some air here. And it's like an inch where you're like, yeah. <laughs> that, that was fun as a kid, right? Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Now if you run up on the curb as an adult, you're arrested for drunk driving. <laughs> Not so much fun. <laughs> Not me personally. 
As a kid, fun was like just playing video games all day long. Just video game, video game. Yeah, Saturday, I'm going to play Nintendo. Mario Brothers. I'm going to get to level 8-4. Yeah, Mario Brothers was fun, right? This, I can't even do this. I can't think of the song now. Thank you. Yeah, you're all... You're all fucked the rest of the evening. That's all you know. God damn it. So, but that was fun as a kid, just playing video games constantly. Now, it's like Zoom meetings. Yeah, and you're just staring at the screen, right? And you're just like, why aren't these women kissing? Like, <laughs> That one guy did get caught for jerking off. That was bad for him. It wasn't the same as the cat guy in court. But was, how do you be like, yeah, that was messed up, wasn't it? Oh my goodness gracious, what a hot, it's hot up here, isn't it? I got this jacket on, I don't know why. At this point, it's very hot, I'll unbutton up. Yeah, okay, I'll just unbutton the button. Like, there we go, yeah, all right. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, this is great. This is fun. Thanks so much for having me here. It is my room, but... Uh... No, I'm just kidding. We're having fun. This is good. Fun. I think I had more fun stuff, but I don't know. Fun as an adult <laughs> is literally sitting in a dark room where no one's talking. Am I right? Like, <laughs> just everyone quiet. Like, you know, just kind of just, just sitting there, just eyes closed. Just... <sighs> this, is, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, we're having fun. <laughs> that is, though, as an adult. Like, as a kid, like, you can't sit quiet. Like, my son, he's 10, he wakes up at 6 a.m. and he's gone. Like, it's just, you know, right out of the door, right out of the gate. He doesn't even change his underwear or anything. He's disgusting. <laughs> disgusting little bastard. <laughs> oh, I hate, I hate that kid. <laughs> He's, he's cute and shit, but... Like, he's not a good athlete. Like, he's always on the team without the mothers with good yoga pants. You know? <laughs> That's how you can gauge your Little League team. Like, do the mothers have good yoga pants? And if they don't, then the team is gonna suck. <laughs> it's gonna be a long season battle. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're gonna strike out a lot, and me too, so... <laughs> That was fun, I like that. <laughs> that was good. Yes, my name is Nick Gordon. Uh, I am the vice president of River Commons. Vice, uh, just basically meaning president of vices. So if anyone's got a cigarette, we can bomb or, you know, some pot, you know, the heavy, the heavy stuff. They only sell beer here. There's no like whiskey or whatever. So president of vices, that's what it is. That was funnier in my head. That's all right. <laughs> That's a good, that's a good. Yeah, Nick, Nick, Nick Gordon is the name I use, I go by, but my real name is Nicholas Richard Gordon. Nicholas, like, that's, that's a pretty powerful name, right? Nicholas Richard Gordon? Like, come on. Who comes up with that shit? But, that's what the, that's what the uh, maternity nurses said to my mother when I was born. She, they're like, you know, what are we going to put on the birth certificate? She's like, Nicholas Richard Gordon. And they're like, wow, what a name. <laughs> what a powerful name. What a regal name. What a... An amazing name for a teenage mother to come up with. <laughs> so impressive. <laughs> uh, she's a good mom. Uh, she, uh, she wrote me a letter when I was born. She sealed it up in an envelope and wrote on it to be opened upon my death. That was 42 years ago. Thank you, Mom. 42 years later, here I stand before you, two degrees from college, one of them being an English degree and the mother who did not go to college. So now I have this letter from my mother that I have to open upon her death and read upon her death and edit upon her death. <laughs> we love you, Mom. We love you. As I got a little older, I had a cousin who was close in age to me. She's a little bit older. She's smarter than me because, you know, girls are smarter than guys, right? Yes. That was, you know, all shameless. But <laughs> Uh, no, she, uh, she started calling me Nicholas Pickles Ridiculous, my cousin. She called me Nicholas Pickles Ridiculous. I'm like, that's pretty funny. 
Uh, of course, we grew up and learned cousins don't stay friends. So. <laughs> Unless they get married, of course. Uh, we are in Maine. Right? That's terrible. That's terrible. Got to middle school, people started calling me Gordo. Gordo was my first uh, nickname, Gordo. I was like, that's pretty cool. Um, got to Spanish 3 and learned that Gordo means fat. And my lunch ladies are assholes. <laughs> I'll have another taco boat if I want. <laughs> Got to high school, people started calling me Flash, Flash Gordon. I was like, that's pretty sweet. That's cool, yeah, Flash Gordon. Of course, it was after my first sexual experience. <laughs> that's pushing it. <laughs> now these kids, actually I have two kids. I got the little boy, uh, he's 10. I got a girl who's 13, they call me Papa. I'm like, yeah, that's, uh, you know, I just like, I don't know, something different. Plus my father's name is Dad. So. <laughs> These jokes are hard to write, so you gotta, gotta bear with me here. <laughs> no, I haven't called me Papa. I think I just relate better to old people. I don't know. Right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, how old are you? Yeah, 12, 12 times. Uh, have you had soup today? Let's ask you that. Twice? Yeah, you had soup twice. Okay, so there we go. I love, I love soup. I, the only problem with like death is the fact that you haven't tried all the soups yet. Yeah. Yeah, there's just so many good soups. It's late. It's like, what time is it? Let me just... It's 7.38. Like, we should be home. We should be in bed. This is ridiculous. We cannot be out having fun at this age. Like, this is... I just, uh, I like that, I like Jeopardy, you know, I like uh, Matlock, you know, same old people things, anything soft. I like my candy hard because my penis is soft. I got, it's a lot of, those aren't laughs, so laugh or get out of it. This is fun, this is good. <laughs> This is good. I, uh, have you guys ever uh, rolled your own um, uh, piece of bologna with mustard in it for dinner? <laughs> it's good. It's, it's where I'm at. Uh, bologna roll. Yeah, bologna roll. That's, that was another nickname. Uh, I just received... Is my fly not zipped? Is that what the problem is? <laughs> I'm sorry for that. I, I thought I looked more important with this jacket on. But, uh, bologna roll is... <laughs> That's going to be the name of my first album. Uh, yeah, bologna roll. It's, uh, good thing we're getting this on video. <laughs> bologna roll. I actually... Uh, I'm actually pretty good, pretty good at sex. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, well, where do I start? <laughs> During the pandemic, I had some booty calls. Um, in honor of the pandemic, I think I, uh, I think I, I think we should rename the booty call. Um, so what, what I came up with is in honor of the pandemic, the booty call should, I have three options. Let me just uh, take a poll. Am I going too slow? Um, no. First one is uh, Grub Hubba Hubba. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? Uh, second one is Uber Eat Me. <laughs> In honor of the pandemic. That's uh, my third option was Whore Dash. <laughs> nice. I know it should be Sex Worker Dash, but it doesn't. Uh, yeah. yeah, right. I am a feminist, I understand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the one sex worker in the front. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, so. It, you know, consequently, uh, all those apps, I decided the, uh, the, the promo code's gonna be HelloFresh. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? <laughs> no, I, uh, you know, I had a girl uh, ask me to tap into my primal urges. Right? 
I don't know if it'll be a guy who has primal urges necessarily, <laughs> but uh, that's what she said. Um, I was like, oh, I look, I, uh, I think I look more like uh, an out of work build a bear. <laughs> primal urges. I think I look like every member of the uh, band Bare Naked Ladies rolled into one. <laughs> What I look like. It's like, no, I'm tapping your primal urges. Fuck me like an animal. <laughs> Spank me and pull my hair. I said at the same time. <laughs> I tried it. I did it. Just, you, know. yeah. you guys seen uh, Castaway, right? Wilson, the volleyball. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Nobody's a Tom Hanks fan. <laughs> Uh, you're in a league of your own. <laughs> God damn it, that was terrible. <laughs> I, uh, I am divorced, in case you couldn't tell. Thank you. Who's not, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's not divorced? Are you guys married? You guys are married? How long? Almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. Wow. Good, 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 good. Almost 10 years. You guys must know the secret to marriage, then. No? He's shaking his head. <laughs> Just fucking on this ride, man. <laughs> is that a spinal tap shirt? What are you wearing there? Like, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash, there you go, sweet. Johnny Cash, I don't know who that is. No, <laughs> do I look like a guy who knows who Johnny Cash is, honestly? Okay. <laughs> I probably do. Wasn't it? It was a movie, right? The man, the, uh, but the walk the line? Thank you, all right, fucking A, right. It's hard, this light is hot. Um, it's hard. <laughs> no, I cannot. I will not. I cannot. Uh, no, uh, that's not what anyone wants to see here. They just want to laugh. They just want to laugh. What was I fucking talking about? The secret of marriage. Uh, so listen, when she comes home someday and says to you, hey, uh, we're going gluten free, yeah. your response cannot be, well, I'm fucking a neighbor for mac and cheese. <laughs> All right, so there's that. <laughs> That's the secret. We got divorced um, on Halloween a few years ago. Uh, best day, do you guys have kids? Yeah, uh, we have kids too. We had kids. What, do we, I mean, they're still they're around. We didn't get rid of them. Uh, yeah. We just split them up. I, like, I have no idea where they are at this moment, which is fine. Uh, not a big deal. But uh, we, so we didn't tell the kids, though, that we were getting divorced, and we ended up finalizing on Halloween. Uh, that's a big problem, because then you gotta take them trick-or-treating one last time, and you get a chance to dress up like a family. <laughs> and then I heard my ex-wife say, hey, check that candy for razors, and poison, and alimony. <laughs> that's it. That's fine. So that's me in a nutshell. And then, th this is me. This is, I mean, are you 42 yet? No? Yeah, he's not for you. This is what you're gonna look like. Young youth in the future. Like, this is like, I'm sweating and it's like long hair and a weird beard and like just stupid clothes that aren't washed. And... I don't even know what the hell's going on. I like I, I I grew my hair. I've had short hair like you, and I grew it during the pandemic. And I was like, I gotta get it cut a little. I just gotta get it trimmed. So I went to the barber and I told her, uh, Hey, can you uh, can you make me look a little more? Uh, midlife crisis and a little less actual crisis. <laughs> She's like, yes, yes I can. She's like, you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for like a, like a Bradley Cooper in A Star Is Born. <laughs> in the end, that's what it's gonna look like. I said, in the end, he killed himself. And she goes, I know. <laughs> I thought about killing myself during the pandemic. I don't know about you guys. I also thought about making sourdough. <laughs> you can kill yourself faster than you can make sourdough, but I'm not gonna do either one of those things. <laughs> no, this is 42. 42 is interesting. Um, I don't know if you guys remember turning 42 or not. Um, <laughs> but like, what, once you get into your 40s, you're like, I gotta get in better shape because you know, right now, like from the front, I look okay, but you can see me from the side. It's like, oh God, what is going? So I'm like, I gotta get in better shape. What's the easiest exercise you can think of? Uh, oh, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And then you get in your 40s and you're like, let's start with head, shoulders. Like, that's, I should be head, shoulders, knees. Oh, uh, knees. <laughs> knees. <laughs> knees. Knees. Knees, belt buckle, penis. <laughs> I 
and then you can't go to Planet Fitness ever again. <laughs> That's the trouble there. Do you exercise? You look like you exercise. No? You just, you just ruined that joke. You used to exercise? I'm just I, I, when you used to, did you wear the short shorts with the underwears built in? Now you didn't do that? I do that. It's fun. Uh, actually, surprisingly comfortable. I was really, I would put them on, I'm like, all right, actually, this works. <laughs> huh, this is wicked comfortable. For me, not so much for the people behind me. But, uh, they're like, how can they both move separately from all? That's, that's disgusting. They were gray. They were gray when we got he got here, right? Now they're just black from sweat. Like that's gross. Yeah. Then you gotta do that like uh, swimsuit roll down thing and kick him off against the back of the bathroom door and uh, hang him with your mother's bras. And, yeah. that's, that's so gross. That's, just, that's terrible. <laughs> Don't exercise. It's just not good for you. Yeah. When you get in your 40s, like you do, you start wearing. I, you know, I've worn glasses for a long time, but like the prescription gets a little bit stronger, and you really, like, I'm pretty blind without these glasses on. Like, I wouldn't be able to see any of you here without these glasses on. Like, I need these glasses to find these glasses. <laughs> I use these glasses to pee sitting down. Like. <laughs> It's pretty bad. I can't, I can't use them as like a prop. You know how some people like, you know, they kind of like put on top of their head, or, oh, here's my glasses, mm, you know. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is there another, I mean, is there another show going on? <laughs> but I, I, I like, I like glasses. I can't put them down the end of my nose and say to kids, like, hey, get off my lawn. Where'd you go? <laughs> I can't put them in my mouth all sexually, like, mmm, hello, mmm, oh, sex worker, oh, yes, mmm, where'd you go? <laughs> I can't whip them off my face at work and throw them on a stack of papers and be like, these numbers don't add up! It's just glasses. <laughs> the cider is very good, number eight at the bar. Uh, Greg and Mike out there, tip them well. Give it up for Greg and Mike at the bar. I love those guys. It's, uh, it's a good comedy show when you got Greg and Mike at the bar. It's also a good comedy show when I talk about my glasses. <laughs> I, like, I like wearing glasses. I, uh, I don't like maybe going blind someday. And, but I kind of got to think of it, I was like, well, if I go fully blind, like name five, five famous blind people. Stevie Wonder. Helen Keller. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Ray Charles. Ray Charles, for the purpose of this joke, stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's three blind people. That's two piano players and some woman. <laughs> There's room at the top of the list. <laughs> There is that guy, his name is Eric, I can't think of his last name, but he, uh, he went fully blind as a teenager and he became an extreme athlete, just for fun. He hiked Mount Everest, blind. Check it out, look it up. It's nutty. <laughs> fully blind hiked Mount Everest. We're not doing that, we're all pretty able-bodied here. Well, some of us, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I don't even, I can't even, I'm just, you know, it's just not nice. And I gotta walk that way too, that's the problem. The guy's a full six inches taller than I am, I can tell. <laughs> just sitting there, and he's going to strangle me to death. And none of you are gonna stop it because you're like, yeah, he wasn't that funny, so. It's fine. <laughs> but this kid, Eric, he hikes Mount Everest blind. I commend him, I think it's amazing. Uh, however, I think his friend's fucked up. <laughs> Like, there's still snow on top of Mount Washington, you guys. <laughs> they could have taken the long way. <laughs> they could have, like, said, oh, here we go, we're hiking up Mount Everest. And, and then, here we go, Eric, ooh, watch that step. Uh, this is gonna be great. Yeah, Sherpas are everywhere. Like, it's, they're all around, they're, you know, you're leading the pack. That's why you can't hear them talking, it's fine. Yeah. And then they get up into where it's snowing and whatnot, and they're like, oh my God, Eric, you made it. <laughs> You do great, and then they turn one of those really big fans on. It's just like really windy. Throw some snowballs at them. Be like, "Sorry, the camera batteries ran out. We'll, uh, we'll have to do it again later." Like that's. 
<laughs> That's fun. Oh my god, oh my god. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Any hockey players in here? Nobody plays hockey? We're in fucking Lewis and Auburn and no one plays hockey? That's outrageous. I play hockey, um, I did at least, and then I got into a fight. Anybody ever been in a fight? Yeah. Fights happen fast. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, it lasts, think of the last time you were in a fight. If anyone's been in a fight, you know it happens quick. And in a hockey game, like it's really fast. This guy, um, he like, he, we went into the corner together. For those of you who don't play hockey, it's like, the, you know, I, I, feel, I feel stupid now. <laughs> Go, you go into your hockey bit, and no one's gonna know what you're talking about, man, because they don't... No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, you guys all seen hockey. You know what hockey is, right? Yeah. Okay, fuck it. I feel like I'm taming lions over here. <laughs> so anyway, he hits me with the butt end of a stick in, in, my, in my chin, and so I grab the stick, and I throw it down the ass. I'm like, you asshole. And then he comes at me. He's like, he's swearing at me and whatnot. I slash him. like, I should take care of it. I should take care of it. And uh, I'm like, I'm just gonna go to the penalty box, no big deal. I know the guy's refing the hockey game, and they're just standing there looking at me. I'm like, what are you gonna do, Gordo? And I'm like, I don't know, I'm pretty fat, so. <laughs> and then this guy just drops his gloves, and he's coming at me. And I'm like, oh shit, here we go. And then I grab his cage, and I pull it down over his eyes, and I just hit him in the side of the head, and then we fall down on top of each other. And uh, it was a good date. Um, <laughs> It was it. It was over like that. It was amazing. It was like, it was like a real fight. And the fucking shape, like my referee friends that were standing there, just watching it, like, oh, let's see what he's got. <laughs> you, know, like, ah. you know, no big deal. I'm like, you guys, you gotta help me out here. Because I looked up the guy afterwards on Facebook. That's what everyone does after they go out with someone, right? Uh, he's a goddamn Marine. Like, I couldn't have had my fucking face caved in. <laughs> by a marine that skates like a pussy. Like, it's like... <laughs> Great equalizer, my friend. <laughs> Put the skates on, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that was fun. That was a good time. Um, God, what else do you guys want to talk about? I mean, how long have I been up here? This is crazy. You guys having fun? Yeah! All right, I'm gonna give it back to your hosts for the evening, Julie Poole, guys. And thank you so much for coming out from home, which I loved. Um, I have been married for 37 years. Thank you, thank you. Um, he also got to work from home. So we had two years of being together every single day. And I learned so much about my husband and my marriage. I mean, I just learned, I, I hate the way he eats, breathes, sleeps, walks, talks, changes the channel on the TV, opens the refrigerator, gets the mail, talks to our dog, talks to our children, chews his food, flushes the toilet, floats his laundry. <sighs> Sorry. Oh, that felt good. That felt good. Actually, I'm really sad that we're both back to work. He works second shift, so I don't see him very often. Um, and I hate to admit this, since he's been gone, I had to go buy one of those um, toys you know, for my evenings. Um, but I put half-dead batteries in it, so it's just like he's there. <laughs>